a discussion two weeks ago, and we had had that one part one, and we talked about our being chosen to be a fruit. And we went through John chapter 15, and we read where Jesus said, I have chosen you to be a fruit. You did not choose me. I chose you to be a fruit. We talked about the different fruits of the Spirit and how it is not just a, an option to be a fruit, but it is a responsibility as a Christian to be a fruit. And it is not just an option to be a fruit. It is one of the commandments of God that we have to be a fruit. And that is why Jesus said, I have chosen you to be a fruit. This morning, we are going to be looking at verse 1 and 2 of the same 15th chapter. The Bible tells us that we are chosen to be a fruit and if we choose not to be a fruit that the Heavenly Father will cut us out from the branch. And it says for those that are bearing fruit he will prune. So today we have the two options that human beings, the whole human beings in the whole earth has, and that is you are either chosen, you're, if you either choose to respect the commandment of God to be a fruit, or if you choose not to be a the fruit, then you'll be cut off. I am not going to dwell on the people that will be cut off because they have chosen not to bear the fruit. I'm going to dwell on those that have chosen to bear fruit, but will be pruned. I don't know if we know what pruning means. Pruning, when I was reading about it on modernfarmers.com, uh, it was telling farmers how to prune fruit-bearing trees. It is not a very comfortable thing for the tree. So as, as I believe that I'm talking to people who have chosen to be a fruit, I am not talking to people who have chosen not to be a fruit because those people who have chosen not to be a fruit will be cut off. He said, any branch that have chosen not to be a fruit, my father will cut off. But those that are fruit bearing will be pruned. Pruning means making the tree uncomfortable. It is not an experience that the tree enjoys. It's an experience that temporarily makes the tree very, very uncomfortable. But at the end of the day, what pruning does to the tree is that the tree is able to be more fruit. I was reading about this uh, education to farmers that there are three steps of pruning fruit bearing trees. And the very first step of pruning fruit bearing trees is to clean, clean up. So that is the first part you have to do as a farmer to prune your fruit bearing trees. And clean up means that you're going to go to the tree and start removing everything that is dead around it. You look at the, you know what we mean by bark of the tree. The tree itself, you see those ones that are not, you remove them. You cut down the branches that are dead. So you start removing the dead ones. And there are leaves that are dead. You start removing them. How do you remove them? You have to cut it. And when you are cutting it off from the tree, the tree is not happy. If it has emotions, it will speak out. Why not leave me the way I am? 
But we cannot leave you the way you are because we are trying to prune you to bear fruit. And so when God comes to you to prune you to bear fruit, God starts with removing things in your life that are useless. So when you start losing some things in your life, it may be that God is pruning you to be above fruit. You may start losing some jobs that you have loved so much. It may be that God is propelling you to better income. The first part is clean up. The farmer is told to clean every dead thing from the tree. You cut the dead branch, you cut the dead bats, you cut, you clean up them after cleaning up from the trees and the bark, you sweep, you use your rake and rake out every dead thing from the tree and pack it out to the bad garbage. That is the first step of pruning a fruit bearing tree. Then from there it goes to thin out. Thin out is the second step of fruit bearing, uh, pruning fruit bearing tree. Thin out means that you're going to look at the tree and start cutting down some excess branches. Some excess branches, it looks bushy and it looks full of branches. But if you leave it like this, there won't be space for the fruit. Because the leaves are taking the space that the fruit will take. So you start cutting out excess branches from the tree. Now, the first part had been done. Those ones were dead branches. That is not this part. This part, these are living branches. Do you do we understand? These are living branches, but they are excess. They are not useful. They are taking up space that the fruit is going to be taken up when it starts you know, being fruitful. And so, you see that the farmer starts cutting out the excess branches, even though they are alive, but they are useless. Hmm. They need to go. They start cutting out these excesses and cutting them out and cutting them out. And at the end of the day, the tree that you saw before the pruning on your way to work in the morning, by the time you come back in the evening, you're like, what happened to this tree? There are still branches there, but there are fewer branches. These are the branches that are going to be a fruit. But that is not the end of the pruning. The tree is still suffering. This tree is still in the process of pruning. It goes to the top part, which means head out. Head out is like shaving the tree. You want to make the tree look hairless. So you start removing unnecessary leaves. Even in these ones that you are going to leave to bear the fruit. Is this a very comfortable process for the tree? It's not. Actually some trees bleed, they cry. You know what I mean? Like you cut some tree, you see the fruit coming out. It's like leave me alone, leave me alone. <laughs> Have you seen trees? I don't know we're in America, but have you really seen trees being cut? Yes. And you see that some trees do bleed out liquid? Yes. That is true. I am uncomfortable. Leave me. Hmm. You're making your heart in them. You're hurting them. So leave me. Leave me alone. But what happens many a time is that it is from this same place that has been pruned that new branches are going to come out. It may come out from the same place or on top of it, usually on top. The process of pruning a Christian it is a very uncomfortable process. And if we have chosen to be a fool, which I believe everyone here has chosen, because I'm not talking to the other group of people that Jesus says, those have that, that have not chosen to be a fool, my father would cut out from the branch. We are not those. We are those that have chosen to be a fool. And so we have chosen to bear fruit. Somebody said, can you handle success? You have chosen to bear fruit. It is not just be, going to be the way you were. Lord, here I am, I've chosen to bear fruit, but leave me the way I am. If you are going to remain that way, then you will not bear fruit. You have to allow yourself to 
go through the pruning process of God. You have to allow yourself to go through the pruning process of God. He has to remove everything that is dead in your life. He has to remove every sin that is in your life. You need to go. It needs to go because when the sins are clouding your life, they are taking the spaces that the fruits of righteousness are supposed to come out from. Those sins need to go. And there are, there are some times in your life that you're not using this. Like, okay, you, you are not really using this. Let me bring out the best in you. And uh, there are some friends in your life that may need to go, or some relationships that may need to go. There's, there are some situations that will start happening and you may have to let some people go. This is a part that whenever I say some people are just not happy with me. It's okay. But there are some people that need to live your life for you to prosper. And that is part of the pruning process. And yet some things that have happened to you lately, and you started to ask God why. It's okay to ask God why. That is my own philosophy. I say, God, can you tell me why? Because I have been praying on this. And many a time God tells me why. And God may be using these situations that have been happening to you to bring you. But it is based on that John chapter 1 verse chapter 15 verse 1 and 2 that he's going to prune you because you have chosen to bear fruit so that you may bear what? More fruit. Because if he leaves you the way you are then you will be not just dormant, you will regress. I always say that you cannot be a Christian and be static. It is a continuous process. If you're a Christian you are either going up or you're going down. You cannot be static. Christianity is a journey. And when God is pruning you, brothers and sisters, you need to recognize it. You need to understand it. And you need to see situations in a way that a non-Christian may not understand what is going on in your life. My purpose of this message today is to redirect our, our reaction to certain situations having this verse in mind. It's to understand of certain things that may have happened or that will happen to us. That who knows? Maybe God is pulling me to bear more fruit. If you check online, you can search on Google and search um, uh, The Seventh Man by Jane John Wong, or you will see the poem I wrote, and I also included that poem in my book of um, Don't Worry, Be Happy. It is a poem of my relationships with my fiancés before I got married, and one of the men I loved so much. I loved them so much. I loved them so much. I never knew that we would not get married. I loved him so, so much. As I was talking about uh, preparing this sermon, I was smiling when I remembered the day we broke. I cried. I was sick for three days. But then, this morning, I was thankful to God because he was pruning me to be a good fruit. It's not that I would not have born good fruit, but I am bearing better fruit now. Amen. I am bearing more fruit doing what, what I love. I'm bearing more fruit now influencing people's lives. Amen. I'm bearing more fruit drawing people to Jesus Christ. I'm bearing more fruit doing my passion, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm so happy that I went through that pruning process. Some of us here have missed relationships. Some of us here have been dumped by men or women or you don't want to say dumped. You just want to say let's go back. And then you're just like, what's going on? You may be going through the process of pruning. Some of us here might have had some prayers that we prayed and fasted and asked God, please, please, please. And God said, no, this is the way I want to answer this prayer. You may be going through a process of pruning. Because it all falls back to the word of God. is when he says in, it says in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, if I'm quoting right, that I have plans for you Amen. to bring you to an expected end. Thoughts of future. Thoughts of hope. I will not harm you. I will not do things that will make you sad. But during the process, 
You may be sad at some point. During the process of God taking you to an expected end, you may be sad at different points. Because the way that you have planned your life may not be the way that God has planned your life, but He is going to bring you to an expected end. Amen. Pruning is part of fruit bearing. Every Christian must be willing to allow God to prune them. Some people go through some experiences and they don't know that God is pruning them to be better counselors, to be a strength to a friend in the future who will go through a childlessness situation and it is only you at this time that will be able to say, I went through that. And this is my testimony. Amen. And if you had not gone through that, you would not have been there for that person. And that individual might have fallen off. And what gain have you if you are there getting the whole world? I would I rather choose to save a soul. Hmm. You might be going through some sicknesses and that God will heal you, but maybe it's just one that said, I'm pruning you. And at the end of the day, when you are healed, you will say, I am a testimony. Amen. You might be going through some situations. I read through this man's book, I've forgotten his name, that doesn't have any leaves. And he said, I kept praying, Lord, I know I wasn't born without leaves, but I kept praying that I will have leaves, that I will shout and say, God gave me leaves, even though I was born limbless. But God chose not to answer that prayer because he wanted me to live without leaves and testify that you can live without leaves and be a great man. He's so rich. There are certain situations in life that may be happening to you or that will happen to you. And when it does happen, I want you to reflect to this sermon and say, Who knows? God may be pruning me. God be pruning me. If you have chosen to be a fruit, let temptations, let trials, let uncomfortable situations that come your way not be obstacles to your growth in righteousness. If you have chosen to be a fruit, let uncomfortable situations and disappointments from big situations coming your way not be an obstacle to your way to glorify God. But let them be a pruning process for you that you may be a fruit because Jesus said, I have chosen you to be a fruit. Amen. You did not choose me. I chose you to be a fruit. And it says, anybody that has chosen to be a fruit, my father will prune that they may be a what? More. The third stage of that pruning process is the one that says, head out. Nobody wants to be hairless, it's uncomfortable. But why even after cleaning all the dead portions of the three and also cutting out all the excess branches, you still come back to the ones that are still left to remove their leaves. Why? Because you want to make sure that what you have is a strong tree. And it's, 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 it's that blog I was reading, it says they have to be like a certain amount of inches from the other so that there will be space for the fruit. So I don't know the stage that you may be in in your pruning process. I don't think anybody here is still in the stage one, but who knows? Somebody may be in stage one. I don't know if anybody may be in stage two where God is cutting down even your living branches. I don't know if we are in the stage three which is cutting out even the remaining branches that are still remaining, we are still removing the leaves. God, why is my situation going from bad to worse? I thought you've already done this for you said worse now. And then you move on. God, you're still, ah, ah, God are you there for something? <laughs> I have confessed all my sins. Why can't you answer me? God is saying, I have. 
unexpected end for you. Amen. You're going to bear more fruit, not just in righteousness. You're not just going to bear fruit, you're going to bear fruit, fruit financially. You're going to bear fruit that will influence your family. You're going to be an influence in your environment. Wait, I am still pruning you. And by the time I am done, you'll be thankful that I removed all these excess leaves, and I removed all these branches, and created enough space for your fruit. Because if I had left you the way you were, you may bear one or two fruits, but you would not be satisfied with your production because I did not prune you for enough space. My brothers and sisters today, I pray that when we are passing through situations in this life, that we would always ask God for grace to help us understand the true picture of what is happening to us. Amen. That our situations will not draw us away from God, but our situations will draw us closer to God. Amen. And in that way, the purpose of God in helping us be a good fruit and much fruit will be achieved in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.